Here's why the PXN V10 might be the wheel for you. Pros and cons. One feature I found particularly nice about the PXN V10 is how easy it is to take off the steering wheel. Another great feature in the wheel is its automatic recalibration. You just have to plug it in and it will automatically start recalibrating itself. The paddle shifters on the wheel are a cool and nice feature to have. They don't always work though, and sometimes you have to really hit them in order to shift the car. This is both a pro and con in my opinion, but it's still nice to have. Another nice feature about the PXN V10 is how easily adjustable these pedals are. If you just look at the bottom, you can screw these either way, making them tighter or looser. The pedals also feature these nice rubber stoppers that allow you to shift as hard as you want to and slam them pedals. It also has a nice metal construction. The PXN V10, despite many other companies not adding a shifter, added a 6 speed gated shifter with a reverse gear, a parking brake, and a high low for anyone wanting to play a truck simulator sort of game or just wanting more gears. I haven't ever explored with it, but it is a feature. One con of the wheel is how small it is and also the weird ridge at the bottom makes it very hard to drift. The wheel also gets uncalibrated easily. Finally, as mentioned before, the wheel's paddle shifters don't always shift very good. The main issue with the shifter is its poor mounting system, allowing it to be moved around and even pulled off while shifting. There aren't very many cons to the pedals, although they can easily be lifted up and moved around on carpet. What is going on everyone? I am Jodak White. I've been sim driving slash drifting for around 8 to 9 months now and I found it pretty fun in Forza, Car X, Assetto Corsa, F1, and plenty of other games. It is a great entry wheel and if you just stick to it you can get pretty good and have a lot of fun with it. Using a 5mm allen key you can take out the allen screws on the side of the wheels and raise or lower them. You can also use a 3mm allen key to take apart these pedals. This allows you to heighten it, lower it, move it to the right, or move it to the left, which I prefer. The wheelbase also allows you to adjust the preload on the springs. You can either loosen them or tighten them. I prefer the Titan version, and I believe many other people do because it's pretty loose. Moving on from the pedals to the wheel. The wheel features every button used on a Xbox or PS controller along with the two buttons on the bottom. The wheel comes with these C clamps that fit over the wheel and a table and you just screw in with a 5mm allen key. The wheel has a 270 degree mode and a 900. The PXN V10 features 3.2 newton meters from a dual motor force feedback system. This is where you plug in the shifter. This is where you plug in the pedals. This is where you plug in the force feedback and this is where you plug in your controller. It is compatible with the Xbox Series X and previous Xbox, but unfortunately no PS5. It is however compatible with the PS4. Shifting into the next segment, we have a 6 speed H pattern shifter, which is pretty alright, but one nice feature is the threaded wire which prevents it from being unplugged easily. So is the PXN V10 wheel worth it? Now that is definitely something that you should just assess your own scenario, I will say. It kind of outperforms the Logitech wheels, although they are a lot more supported and have a lot less issues from what I've heard. I've never used the Logitech, I've only used the PXN V9 and the PXN V10. I'm not sponsored by PXN. The original PXN V9 I got was a Christmas gift and this one I bought for $280 with my own money that I worked for. And honestly, I am here to say that the PXN V10 I don't think is as bad as people say it is. I watched a lot of reviews of these higher up um, sim YouTubers. From what I heard, it did not seem as bad as they made it out to be. Everyone was always talking about that you should just get the Logitech, but I've had no issues with this wheel as an entry or beginner. Like I said previously, I've only been doing this for eight, nine months around there. So I'm pretty new to it and it's been fine for me. It's been, I mean, it's had its hiccups every now and then, like the cons basically that I mentioned before. But other than that, this wheel's been pretty solid. I definitely would recommend it. And I would say if you're in a better financial situation, get a Thrustmaster T300 if you're on PlayStation rather or PC and if you are on Xbox and you have a little bit extra cash, 
definitely check out the Fanatic or Moses steering wheels. And yeah, I mean, it is a great entry wheel. I definitely would recommend it. Like I said, I'm not sponsored. They did not send this to me. I had to buy it myself. And I truly do enjoy this wheel. Like, I play with it nearly every single day. And it's been a trooper for me. I love y'all. I hope this helped you out. I want you to know you can do anything you put your mind to. And if you're looking at these wheels, know that one day, hopefully you can be sim driving with me or with your friends. Whoever you want to sim drive with. I guess it doesn't have to be me. But I love y'all. Deuces. See you. I'm planking, you old hag.